Hey, hi guys, how is it going? So today in this video, I'll be showing you one other uh, one of my projects, which is uh, used for deploying uh, a Kubernetes cluster in my Proxmox environment um, using Fedora Core OS, Terraform, and KOS CTL. So Fedora Core OS will be the operating system for all the uh, virtual machines. And uh, the neat part about Fedora Core OS is that you don't need to update it. You can, uh, like the, uh, there is a feature called auto update. So using that you can, uh, your machine will always stay up to date, right? So you don't need to manually intervene all the time. <clears throat> so this was one drawback, which uh, I was also facing with, um, other operating systems. So I was using Arch Linux up till now for uh, Kubernetes in my local environment. Was It was a bit tricky because um, I had to keep the packages up to date and I was using basically Kube ADM and uh, it was a bit uh, troublesome to sort of keep up everything in check. I'm hoping with this setup, I'll be uh, having an easier time, right? <clears throat> so with that said, um, what I'll be doing is I'll be showing, I'll be executing the Terraform apply uh, over here so that you guys can see what it's actually doing on the right hand side while explaining everything that is going on in the Terraform script on the left hand side. And this is our Proxmox environment. So what I'll be doing is I'll be moving it this section, right? And yeah, let's go. Okay, so uh, as far as the requirements for this project go, you just need one extra node, which will act as a HA proxy for the Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. I've just installed HA proxy on it and enabled and started the service so that every time it reboots also, uh, HA proxy comes on its own, uh, like re restarts on its own. Um, yeah. So uh, what you'll need is you need the IP address and the username of this particular machine, which is running HA proxy. So you, you don't need to have a Raspberry Pi or anything for this. You can also run the same service in some LXC container or some uh, VM if you like. Uh, but since I had a Raspberry Pi lying around, I just made use of it. So yeah. And for TFRs, what you'll need is you'll need the username and IP address uh, for your HA proxy load balancer. As I said earlier, you'll need the cluster configuration. So what version of KOS you want to use, what version of FCOS you want to use for your base image and the number of master and worker and then uh, their respective configs. Auto start is nothing but uh, if you restart your Proxmox node, do you want it all the VMs to start on their own as well. So I usually like to have this as true. Um, and then there is your hypervisor config. So Proxmox username, password, IP address, all that good stuff. Okay, so with that being said, let's start. So, uh, let's go back to main.ts and I'll explain you what, uh, what's actually going on, right? So first of all, I have a local ISO URL uh, in which I'm in injecting the FCOS version, which is coming from the TFRs, which I showed you earlier, right? This URL I'm fetching um, using this null resource, right? So it downloads it to your local directory and renames like uh, rename, renames it like Q, uh, coreos .qq2. Um So, yeah. So if you want to uh, sort of like have a new image or whatever, right? Uh, I would suggest deleting this file and then rerunning this uh, because it doesn't have the capability to detect. Okay, you know there is a newer version or whatever. So that's one caveat to keep in mind. And then. <clears throat> What we are doing is we are copying this QCO2 image to our Proxmox node. Um, so uh, what I'll, I'll explain what's going on. So first of all, uh, I'm removing the folder, which uh, let's say if you are rerunning this uh, Terraform script, then you don't want the old QCO2 image to be reused. You want the newer version, right? So re removing the folder, then recreating the folder, then copying the uh, CoreOS QCO2 file 
right and then what i'm doing is i'm then copying the ssh keys so this is needed for uh, a script task that will come later so uh, i'm actually not using username and password for any of my vms i'm actually just uh, asking core os to sort of uh, deploy itself with uh, authorized uh, ssh access keys so i'm just copying over my uh, default uh, public key to the vm right and then using it uh, for ssh access <clears throat> so this will copy the uh, ssh keys once that's done then we are running a script so i'll show you what the script is doing Let's see here we go so this script is actually responsible for creating this this particular template and as you can see it's uh, as you, as you can guess this is actually being cloned for uh, creation of other vms so first step is to destroy uh, any vm or template which has id 7000 and then it is basically creating a new vm with all the configurations needed so there you see uh, this is the path for uh, the ssh keys which are being which are being copied right so this is your public key <clears throat> right and then what else right so uh this is the place where you want to have uh let's say you want to have some defaults and you don't want to use local lvm or you have some uh zfs uh pool or something that you want to use for this then you can you know you can configure it over here so this the same setting will be uh copied over to other vms right not necessarily all the settings so for example uh, bridge and network related stuff right that won't be copied over because we are gonna uh, be rewriting that with our domain module but uh, yeah some of these settings you can move over you can check out the module which i will show you where it is um, to figure that out um, right so once this template is ready once create template uh, resource is created then we want to sleep for some time because the thing is that uh, if you uh, if you look at the script right so the last step in the script is actually converting the vm to a template and this takes some time uh, for me it's taking like 15 16 seconds uh, i've set the sleep timer to be like 30 seconds just to be safe so that it works for other people as well you can increase this if it's uh, like taking more time for you then you can probably increase this and try <clears throat> right now we have two ignition modules so this module is doing nothing but creating the ignition configuration for all our uh, nodes and if i show you the module itself right so this is the module pretty straightforward module it's just creating a configuration file and then uh, rendering it into a, a another thing then that thing is being rendered into a ign file that's it right and you have system units over here defined like this um so you can see what i have i have a uh, guest agent i have fs trim and i have docker right and then there are some directories that i wanted to have right so you can configure this according to what you need uh, again this is just a file you can uh, edit which uh which sort of uh, <clears throat> which sort of directories we want which uh system units you want over here and you can see this is where we are actually copying our ssh keys as well so coreos is actually using the ignition files for understanding okay what are my uh, authorized keys and stuff right so that's the ignition module uh it doesn't take much time this this module just takes like one second for creating uh, ignition configurations for all the uh, vms and then we are off to the races right so once uh, the ignition um, once the sleep thing is done right so we are sleeping for 30 seconds once the sleep thing is done we are going ahead and creating the master domain as well as the worker domain uh, modules right so uh, what i mean by that is basically we are creating the master nodes and the worker nodes right um, you can look at the code over here what what i'm doing uh, with these um, domain uh with this domain module right so it's not uh not much basically i'm just cloning uh full doing a full clone of the template which i'm creating right um and so let's say you want to rename your template minus the core os golden then you know you'll have to rename it here as well 
um, just putting it out there. And uh, this is the special sauce which is making this whole thing work. So uh, the Proxmox um, uh, provider for Terraform does not actually currently have uh, the capability to create ignition files and then ingest them. So you have to pass them like this. So file equals to ignition file for that particular uh, VM right and then that that's how it's uh, sort of ingesting the files <clears throat> and then if you will see here then i'm also adding the so whenever this uh, a vm is being created i'm also uh, adding that vm uh, into my known host and whenever it's being destroyed then i'm remo removing its address so uh, generally you don't want to do this in um, on the internet Right, because you can uh, be prone to, like you can uh, experience man in the middle attacks. So you want to be careful where you want you run this script. Uh, I have uh, created this repo for home lab use. So I'm expecting users to not run this in like a AWS or whatever, right? So anyways, uh, the provider is Proxmox. I'm hoping that you won't be using this um, uh, over the internet, right? If you do, then just uh, remove these sections right and uh, i don't know you'll have to somehow figure out how to uh, inject the um, ip addresses uh, like the ssh keys uh, into your known host so that the next steps can take place without any hitch right <clears throat> so this is what i have done uh, you can probably uh, edit this uh, local exec script. Probably you can add your own remote lo uh, remote exec script or something. Uh, I'm not sure how that would work, but uh, yeah, you have the option to modify this module, right? And that will work for all your nodes, basically, right? Um, so once you have your master and worker domains ready, you we are creating a HA proxy config file right so once these all these vms are done creating so as you can see all these vms are already done and we are actually on the KOS uh, step um and don't worry about these errors uh this is basically KOS waiting for all the nodes to come up take some time but uh, it will come up in a minute so uh yeah we were talking about J proxy so uh, once we have the IP addresses, right, by IP addresses and the host uh, and the names of uh, all the VMs that were created, we can like uh, zip zip them into a map and then pass them to a template, which creates our HA proxy config. So if I show you, this is what our con current HA proxy config looks like, right? So this is the default stuff, right? And then there is our front end cube API, connectivity, controller join API. All these front ends and you know um yeah basically it uh, pushed the ip addresses of all my master nodes into this particular thing one by one right so even if you have multiple not three like five seven uh master nodes this will work flawlessly because this is not uh like hard coded so if i go to my template so you'll see that uh i'm doing a for loop over here so for all the um, nodes in that map, it will create an entry over here, right? And then uh, we have some default time time offset, which you can modify according to your requirements. For local use, I found that you know, five seconds connect time. Like this is uh, fine, right? And uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that works um, for multiple master nodes as well even if you have like uh, more like it doesn't matter how many master nodes you have it will loop through them and create your HA proxy right um, yeah so when the HA proxy config file is done creating then what we are doing is we are um, SSHing into the Raspberry Pi which I talked about earlier and then uh, doing a running a CHOM on the hc ha proxy directory so what this helps us do is uh, we cannot actually copy the file unless we own the directory so that's why we are doing this and then once this is uh, done then we are actually copying over the config file which was generated on my laptop to my raspberry pi right um, and then restarting the 
uh, system unit. <clears throat> uh so one more thing to keep in mind while running this uh you want to have passwordless sudo uh on your ha proxy server right so what i mean by that is if i show you uh, this guy so you'll see that uh, my user ubuntu does not have to give a password to use uh, sudo basically So that's something you want to set up because otherwise this step will fail and give you issues. Um, if you don't want to use your main user, like I'm using Ubuntu in this case, uh, you can create another user and uh, just give that user access to sudo. Um, yeah, so if you're not comfortable uh, giving your uh, other user apart from root, uh, then you can do it something, you can do something like that. Um, <clears throat> What else? So then uh, once the HA proxy system unit has been restarted on a Raspberry Pi, we can now go ahead and use KOS to actually deploy the Kubernetes cluster on our VMs. Right. So again, I'm just uh, creating another map and then pushing every all the values into a template. <clears throat> so if I show you the template, uh, this is basically what it's doing. It's just uh, looping over all the uh, master nodes and all the worker nodes, right? So masters and workers, sorry, masters and workers, and then uh, like uh, assigning them a role of a, ro uh, a worker or a controller. And then at the bottom, I have added the external address uh, for our HA proxy server, right? So that's how it's working right now and yeah that's about it so uh once we have our kos config which looks something like let's see it here, don't yeah. so it looks like this right? so because i have seven nodes basically it's pretty huge uh three mass controllers and then four uh worker nodes and then at the bottom i have my ha proxy configured like this Right, so that's how it will look once that file is generated on your local. We are just running KOS CDL apply and then uh, overwriting the cube config file. Right, so this uh, takes care of the Kubernetes um, part of the equation. So now I can just run cube CDL. Get next. And there you have it. We have a Kubernetes cluster with which is running core OS essentially. And if I uh, wanna SSH into one of them, I can just do SSH core and the rate, the IP address, there you go. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, let me know uh, if you try to deploy this in your own home lab, let me know how it goes. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.